Hey guys, Captain Figurine back with another video and finally we're gonna continue with our weapon series and today we take a closer look at the Mosin M9130. And as always we will start with some background information. So first we go back into the late 1900. A lot of armies started to use the self-contained cartridges. Actually the first that started with that were the French but fun fact if you do a little bit more research it was actually a Swiss guy that first wanted to produce self-contained cartridges, but he didn't find anyone that supported it here in Switzerland, so he moved over to Paris, started some manufacturing there, and he had also some guys working with him. They also started picking up that concept a little bit later because he was quite a little bit early for the time with that and nobody really wanted to adopt it. So yeah, something nice to know. So of course, Russia needed one of these rifles as well. Two guys came up with an initial design. It was Sergei Mosin and Emil Nagant, a Belgian guy. And there is a lot of history about these two guys and I'm not really sure what is true because I found so many different sources. One of them told me Nagant made the feeding mechanism and Mosin made the general design and shape of the weapon. On another source I found that Nagant made a claim on a patent that he had on some of the parts and the cartridges so very hard to say. But finally it's Mosin's weapon. They also call it the Mosin. First it wasn't called like that but now we call it the Mosin. And actually it's just the western part that really calls it the Mosin Nagant because Mo Nagant is not really related to the weapon anymore because he also saw some money for the stuff he did if that is true as well. Hopefully it is. Then we go to 1922 when the Soviet Union got the power. They started producing more small arms and they wanted to, you know, redesign the Mosin a little bit. So the final design we got there was the Mosin M9130 and that's the one we have in game. And that's why it's called the 9130 because it was the redesigned model from 91 and they redesigned it in 1930. So they shortened the weapon a little bit, gave it better sights. In 1932 they also started producing sniper rifles of the Mosin. We can see the change details. Also in game there is a little cutout on the side and they had to bend the handle a little bit so it does not interfere with the sight. And they were mainly produced at Tula and Isesk. During the war they produced around 17 million of these guns but as you know they had a lot of times when they were really short on small arms. And also fun fact here, the first problem they had when they really ordered the first batch of weapons, they didn't realize that like if soldiers gonna train with them and if you use them in combat, you're gonna damage some of these rifles. So if you have 4 million of these you get quite some damaged weapons back to your factory so you have to fix them. And to fix them you need parts, you need time, you need resources and so on. That's why the Soviet Union always had some trouble with the amount of small arms they had. Also some stuff got captured by other countries, also caused some trouble. But over the whole duration of the war they produced around 17 million of these rifles. So it's quite a common gun you can also find nowadays. And also a very common gun you would see on a World War II battlefield. You would see this one much more often than the 1907 we get issued to our standard troopers. So as we said in the other video that's kind of weird and it is kind of wrong. But now at least let's find out if our in-game model is accurate. If we take a closer look at the front side of the weapon we can see a protected side there. And that's very accurate and that was an improvement they made on the 9130. For the rear side we have the Knovelov rear side. That's the one they also made on the Extragoons. The Dragoons they upgraded with Mosin M9130 rear sides and barrel bands and so on. The barrel bands aren't fixed with screws as on the pre-war models. It's just metal that got hammered in. It's easier to do. And we have a round receiver instead of a hex receiver. On the pre-war rifles we can see some hex receivers. They also had some left during the wartime so they fitted it on new stocks but they just produced the round ones because it's easier and cheaper to produce than the hex receiver. So as I said they produced 17 million of these guns so you can find a whole lot of different models also from different nations that produce these guns but the one we have is a very classy one they would produce during the wartime. So overall they made a great job on this model. There is some trouble with the ejection on the sniper version because there is no ejection.
but maybe they're gonna fix some minor stuff in the future. Alright, and finally let's take a closer look at the in-game stats we have. It uses the classic 7.62mm cartridge, has a hit power of 15, and as we can see on the damage stats, and we know from our damage test it can down someone on up to 200 meters with that 10.1 damage. And the damage goes up if you upgrade the weapon. We have a reload time of 3.4 seconds, we have the 5 round inertial magazine and we have the classic 5 kilogram weight but the real weapon just has 4 kilograms. Alright so that's it for this week's weapon series and I hope I can continue a bit more consistently with these videos. And tell me down in the comment section which weapon you would love to see next on the weapon series. And as always, I hope this video gave you some more information about the M9130. If you like that content, stay tuned and I see you next time guys. Have a good one. Captain Figurine out.